Welcome to Deep Thought. Thoughts about the Watchmen series. Now, lately, you know, I've been watching uh, this series on HBO, The Watchmen. Now, I remember when it first came out, when the comic book first came out back in the 80s, it blew my mind because the whole premise of the comic book was about how the world would really be if superheroes actually existed. Now, the superheroes, most of them were just, you know, just some people putting on some costumes and stuff, and at least the first generation of them, and then the second generation of them, they had one guy, Dr. Manhattan, you know, was a white guy, was a white guy who somehow got irradiated and basically became an essential god. I mean, he became so powerful and so alienated Though from the rest of the human population, he stopped wearing clothes. He just walk around butt naked, right? And that was an important piece. And then there was another character, Ozymandias, who was just highly intelligent, like super intelligent. And he, I mean, he was just talented. And then yet another guy who was kind of like a Batman type called Night Owl. He was. Um, able to you know create like fancy gadgets and then of course there was Rorschach Rorschach who well he was just crazy (laughs) he was just ruthless he was uh, legitimately crazy and you know it was interesting it was an interesting series and how everything came about um so and it's always uh it spawned a, a recent movie uh, that followed the uh, comic book almost to a great extent, to a great extent. And then also um, um, you've had some recently with DC Comics where they brought the, you know, Watchmen characters in line with, like, you know, the same universe as Superman in them. And it was like, okay. So they decided to do a TV series on it. So the series was interesting, See, keep in mind, in the first comic book, none of the heroes were black. Now, they had one black character who was a psychiatrist and a prison psychiatrist and interacted with Rorschach. And I was like, okay. So when the series started, and I'll I'll just say now, there's some spoilers if you haven't watched it. It started out with, even though this is an alternate history, you know, alternate universe, it started out with uh, a depiction of something that actually happened in the real world. And that was the Tulsa uh, race ride in 1921. It was a situation where a group of whites attacked a a very prosperous business district in uh, Tulsa, the Greenwood District. I mean, you're talking about a place where uh, there were several black businesses, blacks were living well. In fact, I saw an actual film clip from there. I mean, they were walking around. They, They were having a good time. But that it was an area that was attacked by racist whites. I mean, and it's really, it serves as though, I mean, it was one point, like part of it was bombed out by an airplane. It's the only city in American history to get bombed from the air. Only city. Only section to get bombed from the air. So that was part of the Watchmen. It was interesting. And then the main character played by uh, Regina King was uh, playing kind of a superhero type of character. But interestingly enough, she was part of the police department. And because uh, the way they had everything set up, it was like members of the police department wearing masks. So I was like, okay, this is interesting. And like a lot of people were surprised about the Tulsa thing because a lot of people didn't know about it. It wasn't taught in history books. It was not taught in history books and it was almost like underground knowledge. So anyway... So she was she was there. And then as you watch it, I was like, wait a minute, because it established that one of the the character that uh, got everything started, that got the whole superhero craze started was a character called uh, Hooded Justice in the comics. And they portrayed him. They never showed his actual face, but he was portrayed as uh, a white man, possibly racist white man who was just beating the hell out of people. But in the Watchmen TV series, it established he's really a black man pretending to be white so he can get some stuff done. I was like, wow. Right? And then um, it was an interesting thing because you still had the Dr. Manhattan character. And at first it didn't seem like he would be a part of it, but then it was established 
he was actually married to Regina King's character. It was like, wait a minute, what? He had actually turned himself into a black man to marry this to marry this woman. I was like, what the hell? And I'm like looking at it, and I'm like, and you know, it concluded last night. I'm gonna ain't gonna get into it too much, but it was just like, hmm. All right, yeah, it was a good story. I mean, it didn't make sense at first, but as they brought everything together, it was like, oh, okay, good story. But then I started thinking. I was like, okay, um, yeah, what's the meaning behind that? You know, remember what I said about uh, TV shows and stuff. There's always deeper meanings. I don't care what I don't care what they talking about. There's something deeper, some message, something to go for it. I mean, even if if it's a cartoon, like um, let me just throw out a tangent, a quick example. Avatar: The Last Airbender. I might have talked about this, but if, if some people might remember, I've actually talked about how many indigenous cultures see the races of the world as representing different elements. Uh, particularly uh, like the Hopi, the Hopi tribes, they have something uh, where they talked about like the, the different um, groups, like whites representing fire, uh, Asians representing uh, air, Native Americans, uh, true Native Americans represent earth and Africans, black people represent water. So it was like, oh, wait, there's something more to this. And so they actually introduced that in Avatar, but it's actually an old concept that uh, many indigenous people still follow. But and I'm looking at but I'm looking at the Watchmen, and I'm like, okay, they got to be seeing something deeper with this. You know, one, that was bold that a show that came off almost like a black series, you know, where the main characters were black, and then, you know, the only main character they had that you could say was white and a good guy was an older version of Ozymandias, played by uh, Jeremy Irons. But you're like, wait a minute, what's going on here? What's the deeper meaning behind that? I mean, yeah, it's easy to say, oh, it's just a story. But remember, with television, any shows, movies, it's never just a story. You know, it's never just a story. Remember the word programming. So I'm like, okay. And it's not obvious. It's not obvious, but I'm like, okay. You had the most powerful character voluntarily become a black man. The most powerful character, because he could have, you know, he didn't have to he didn't have to become that black man. In fact, they showed other white men. You could have had a white man do that. And it still would have been the same general idea. You know? And, you know, I can, you know, even um, like the racial, it was a strong racial element because the, some of the bad guys were just straight up white supremacists. And they were, they were very, like, very clear on their uh, thing. And I'm like, I'm sitting back, I'm like, okay, you show this on HBO, you have something that was a very popular series and you added these elements to it. Hmm. Now, I don't know, like, personally, at this point, I don't know what the deal is. I don't know what the bigger thing is. I mean, what the bigger message, what what message will people who watch it get? Because there were a lot of people who watched it, and they, they of course, they were pissed off. A lot of it on just racial stuff. But then um, <clears throat> it was some minor stuff in there. You know, they were talking about reparations and things of that nature and you know of course the uh, white villains the white supremacist villains in there they were like hey you know ever since things changed we don't have power like we used to so i'm like hmm so i'm wondering okay what's the overall thing i might have to like when i was watching it i wasn't watching it with the eye to like study it I really wasn't. I was just, I was a Watchmen fan. I just wanted to, i just wanted to see what they want to do but as i watched it more i was like wait a minute there's more to this and even then, I still was, I wasn't like, okay, I'm going to watch, you know, what's going on. I'm like, okay, I've seen everything. Now, I'll take some time later on to go back through it and, like, really pick apart different things. You probably have some people on a more metaphysic tip who can, like, maybe break it down quicker because uh, they were looking at it that way. 
Rom just wanted to be entertained. Believe it or not, even though I talk metaphysics on this channel, I don't always, sometimes I just want to be entertained, but that's becoming hard. <laughs> you know, sometimes I just want some entertainment. Sometimes I'll watch, I don't know, I'll watch some kid stuff. You know, the amazing world of Gumball just to laugh. <laughs> but it, even then, I can see some stuff. But I just want to be entertained. But I'm like, okay, I'm going to have to come back to this one. So anyway, that's all for now. I'll get back with y'all later. Peace and many blessings.